what about the future of classical music? We have a lot of competition. Also, kind of the, uh, the place in the social class that classical music has um, held is breaking down. A big problem with symphony orchestras in the US is the benefactors of these great institutions are retiring and passing from the scene and their children are not as interested as they were. They just, uh, an excellent article on what's going on in Minnesota made the point that the, the new generation just doesn't love the music the same way that their parents and their grandparents did. And so they're not uh, opening the bank accounts to support it to the same degree. Also, with digital media, you can stay at home and watch a, a web cast of a great orchestra, Never Leave Your House, all of these things. And yet, at the same time, because the modern world is really eclectic, there's room for people to be exposed to classical music in a way where they may have been sort of put off by it. So that, in a sense, the breakdown of how classical music fits within a socioeconomic class breaking down is both, it's a bit of a double-edged sword. My feeling is that everyone loves classical music, they just don't know it yet, and that it's our job to introduce them to it in a way that they'll fall in love with it. Any thoughts on those questions? I, I very much uh, agree with that. I, it's also the experience, also working with uh, with people from from other genres, from uh, um, with VJs, with with uh, DJs, there's often uh, sure classical music. Yeah, I, I also listen to it. There's these and these tracks there on my i on my iPod anyway. Um, the live situation is, is is different. I think we in a way we need to catch up to to what's going on digitally anyway, in terms of acceptance and in terms of uh, accessibility and really create interfaces. Mm. I'm very very hopeful and and because what I see is is that. Uh, you know, the really good music is, is it doesn't have a problem. You can't destroy it. No. You don't agree? No, no, no. I, I agree, but it has, um, um, I think classical music is not for everybody. There's like, you, some some trash metal fan can can try to convince me that, I don't know, there's trash metal bands that is wonderful and explain all the details to me and I would might still not like it. That's exactly what I, what you said before. Is exactly what I feel is that statistically there must be many many more people who would appreciate classical music. They just don't know it, and we need to facilitate them getting in touch with that music. And uh, it's an old um, um, story that if if I were never if I would have never been in a classic music concert. So when can I applaud? What do I need to wear? And there's a, there's a threshold of do I, if you think that all the other listeners are experts and you are the one who doesn't know anything. It's this, this social pressure thing. And I, I worked with an Australian Baroque orchestra. And, and for example, there's a wonderful thing. They have this website and one of the buttons says, so you've never been to a classical concert? And you click on. And with a few very friendly, not patronizing, just very says, well, in general, the orchestra plays something called a symphony and there's individual movements and we think it's better to go from one movement without an applause. What should you wear? Well, you don't need to dress up in a tuxedo, but since we celebrate something here, something nice, maybe put on something smart, but not, and, and, and you kind of, it, it's, a, it's a very nice way to, to uh, attract an audience and I played with that orchestra many times and they are very limited in how far they can travel. They have these five cities in Australia, the big cities or major cities that they can visit. But they have, I think, 35 or 40 concerts in the same hall in Sydney and they're all sold out. It's 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 wild. I mean, we sold out eight concerts of the or six concerts of Stabat Mater, a co contemporary Stabat Mater composition, and of course that's um, all the people who have creative on their business cards, you know, with these <laughs> creative managers, creative directors, and directors in the record companies and and concert halls. They should be creative and and try to access people and and approach them and say, hey, this matters. And the root for this, I think, is a school education, is 
it's mu much more difficult if you have never listened to classical music and at the age of 30 suddenly you're expected to discover it. It's more difficult than if as a child you played the piano even just for a couple of years or the flute or something and then you already in, in your memory there's some connection to this field of music. However, not to forget, you can go through school and then there's a gap. You're 14, 15, and then there's no, there's, no, there's no real vessel. And I think we also need to fill that gap. And 